Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So today's video is in continuation to Databricks interview play series and this is part 4 in that. So today again we are going to cover few interview questions. So the first one here is what is auto scaling in Databricks cluster? So this is also a very commonly asked question. What is auto scaling in Databricks cluster when you are giving interview from a technical point of view? When you, uh, you know, provide, uh, you know, configurations to a particular cluster, there you will actually see this option of auto scaling. In auto scaling, you basically provide the minimum number of workers and the maximum number of workers, right? Uh, what happens in auto scaling is, so let's say you have provided a minimum uh, number of workers as two. Now, whenever your job will actually start, uh, your it will automatically fetch two workers first, right? Because you have specified that the minimum number of workers to be two. Now let's say your job runs and it needs more worker and you have specified a range up to eight, right? Two to eight, let's say you have provided that range. Now it needs, let's say two workers. Now your job needs two workers. Then what Databricks will do automatically, it will go ahead and it will fetch the machines for the two worker, two more workers, right? And suddenly let's say your workload drops and then it does not need uh, one uh, worker then it will go ahead and it will drop that one worker so this is what is called as auto scaling so based on the usage uh, databricks is actually trying to fetch machines or the workers for you so this is what is called as auto scaling this helps you in terms of uh, money if you want to save money uh, while processing your uh, etl or workload in that case it definitely works very well so let's go ahead and see where do you see this auto scaling option right now, if I go back to this portal, uh, Databricks portal, and if I try to create a cluster over here, you will see that there is an option to enable auto scaling, right? This option. So the moment I enable this option of auto scaling, you can see the minimum number of worker and the maximum number of worker, right? So this is what the concept I explained. So first it will fetch two workers. If it needs more, it will go up till eight. If it doesn't need, it will, you know, remove those workers until two. So this is how it actually works. Your um, auto scaling, it is really good feature. You know, you just pay for the number of machines you use in that sense. But yes, do remember that uh, if you are, if you are very much keen on, uh, you know, increasing the performance in that case, auto scaling might not be a good option because, uh, you know, even to go and fetch the machines, uh, you know, uh, let's say two extra machines while doing a job run, it actually, you know, takes a little bit of time. So time wise, it's not a good option, but yeah, cost wise, it's definitely a good option. So you need to actually check uh, you know, what, what suits best for your job. And the second question that we have is what is managed and unmanaged table load. This is also something that is asked a lot, you know, uh, what is a managed and what is an unmanaged table. So on this, I've already created a video. When you talk about a managed table, right? Whenever you create a table, right? Uh, in Spark, what happens is it has the metadata information right where it stores the schema and it also has the data itself right these two things are there now when your metadata and the data like both of them are actually managed by databricks right in that case it is managed by databricks not by you databricks manages your both data as well as the metadata in that case the table is called managed table because that table is actually managed by databricks right it is managed by spark right because spark is managing your data it is managing your metadata right in this case what happens is by mistake if you delete the table automatically metadata also gets deleted but uh, when you like for example whenever you do a drop table command right in that case metadata and data both will get deleted but when you talk about unmanaged table these are the tables where you define where your uh, you know schema or the data will reside you define that you define a particular location that this is the place where i want to have my data right so in this case what happens is your spark will manage the metadata okay your spark will actually go ahead and uh, it will manage your metadata but when coming on to the data location, your data files, those will be handled by you because you will provide the location of the data files. Now, in this case, what happens is if you drop the table, in this case, Spark will remove the metadata because it knows where your metadata is present, right? 
but it has no control over the data that you have stored. So automatically the files will be present in the location or in the path that you have provided. So you need to go and remove the files if you want to. So this is the difference between managed and unmanaged table. And in fact, I have created a video also on the same. If you go to my channel, Databricks Hands-On Tutorial, you will see managed and unmanaged tables in Spark Databricks. A whole explanation is there. How to create it, how to handle it. Everything is here if you want to go ahead and check out in detail. Now, similarly, you know, whenever you have to create a, you know, a managed table, uh, in that case, uh, right now, if you see, right this particular uh, statement right a df dot write save as table i am just saving the table i have not provided any location so it will go ahead and create a managed table because spark will automatically manage the data as well as both metadata data and metadata but when i provide the path over here right it will go ahead and create an unmanaged table because my files will be saved at this particular location or the path that i have provided so this is a very clear and small difference between both of them so let me move back to the ppt and let us see what question we have next so how do you configure number of cores in the worker so this is also a very spark oriented question so number of cores is usually equal to the number of partitions or maybe a little more than that, like one or two cores more than the number of partitions. So you can always configure it in a way that uh, like, let's say you have five partitions to work on, then you can have five cores. It's, it's very simple in that sense, right? But yeah, you can have like one or two, um, you know, a more cores available uh, all the time. So the next question is, how do you handle bad records in Databricks? Now this handling of bad records, this is also a very common uh, question. So let's say you have, uh, you know, a mismatch or you have a nulls, how you're going to handle that. So typically there are three ways, permissive, drop malformed and fail fast. So these are the three modes in Databricks to handle errors, right? And then you have one uh, more way, which is called bad record path, right? So in case you have, um, uh, bad records, you can redirect them to a separate file, right? That file will only have your bad record. So that is called bad record path. I will actually show you how we can do it. And then you have uh, mode wise, which is permissive. When I say permissive, in that case, what happens is uh, whatever data that you are trying to read, let's say if it has null values, what it will do is um, uh, not null values. If it has any error values or, uh, you know, any mismatch values in that case, in the in the data frame that you're trying to read it will store them as null right but the entire row of error will be saved as a different column i will show you that and then you have drop drop mal uh, formed right in this case the whole record that has the error value will get dropped off right let's say uh, you have uh, an integer in place of a string, like something like that, some, some bad record, right? In that case, the whole record will get dropped off from the data frame that you are trying to read. And similarly, you have fail fast. Fail fast is something like as soon as you recognize the error, just stop it, just uh, error out the notebook. So that is called fail fast. So let us go back to the portal and see how you can handle the errors. So, um, let me so this is the uh, syntax if you see over here permissive for the permissive mode so read dot option so read it in a permissive mode so you are defining the mode of read which is permissive and then you are defining a corrupt column so what i told you is in permissive what happens is if there is any error uh, record that will uh, be shown as null and there will be a separate column which will hold the whole uh, you know column value so in this case, you can see that I have specified an option over here where I am, uh, you know, specifying the name of the extra column that is coming, which is corrupt record, right? And then, the, and then I'm trying to read the file. So what happened over here, here is so all the null values you can see. So uh, if you see this, this, this was a null, so it gave a null over here. And similarly, this sepal length over here, right? It might be, there might be some data issues over here. So that is why it kept it as null and you see it has kept the whole record of the row over here so you essentially see that text one was the value here right now this text uh, text one was actually um uh, you know string and this was a uh, float column so that is why it actually gave a null over here 
So this is how your permissive works. So let me go down and this is the drop, drop malformed. So typically uh, the syntax is pretty much the same. In drop malform, what happens is the whole row which has an error will actually drop out. So you can see that there is no null. So don't uh, think about this null. Okay, because uh, this null was essentially the null in the file itself. So that's okay. But if you see, and it was a nullable column, so that's fine. But if you see, uh, you know, there is no other column mismatch or a data type mismatch that has been uh, registered as null. So everything over here is, uh, you know, dropped. So this corrupt column, this you, uh, you may not have. It, it is not necessary to have this column uh, when you talk about drop malformed. Then you have an option of fail fast. It is also like uh, the syntax is pretty much similar and you can see the job is aborted because uh, of uh, this fail fast option which you have select, selected. Now then there is another option of bad record which I explained to you when I say bad record you just specify bad record path. You just specify the path of the file where you want to keep all the bad records. Right. So then in that case, you can go ahead and check uh, basically this particular file. This file will all uh, have all your bad records which have not been loaded into this particular data frame. Now, uh, if you want to have more detail on this particular uh, topic, then in fact, I have made this error handling uh, in Databricks notebook, handle errors in Databricks notebook. I've made this video. You can go ahead and check this out in the Databricks hands on tutorial. So this is pretty much that I wanted to cover in this particular video. Do remember to like, share and subscribe to my channel. And thank you so much for being till here. Thank you so much.